This is the island where our opera Domineo takes place, an arena within which all the action happens. It is ancient Crete, the kingdom of Idomeneo, the Idomeneus who in Homer was one of the kings who went with the Greeks to Troy. Mozart was only 25 when he was asked to set Idomeneo in 1781, though he already had several operas to his credit. But this is his first masterpiece. It's a serious opera, old-fashioned even in Mozart's day, with conversational passages and formal arias in which the singer reflects upon the situation or declares his determination or love or despair or wonders what on earth he's going to do next. There were other rules that governed this very strict form of tragic opera, but the young Mozart flexing his creative muscles wasn't one to be confined within too many rules. And what makes Idomeneo such a marvellous opera is the ease and generosity of invention with which he handles the form. Tonight it's going to be conducted by Benjamin Britten, who's one of the work's warmest admirers. King Idomeneo, sung by Peter Piers, is a properly royal figure, anguished by the conflict between his rash promise to Neptune and his love of Idamante and his duty to his people. Idamante, who sung by Anne Pashley, is an ardent young hero who has inherited his father's sense of responsibility and responsibility to the people of Crete even above his beloved Ilya, who is sung by Heather Harper. Even Electra, sung by Ray Woodland, who also loves Idamante, has her moment of womanly tenderness between her furious outbursts. They might so easily all have been puppets, but Mozart's music makes them people. Now, quickly, here's an outline of the first act. Before the opera starts, Idomeneo has sent ahead from Troy a number of Trojan prisoners, including Priam's daughter, Ilya. And we're also to know that Agamemnon's daughter, Electra, has fled to Crete after the murders at Mycenae. Ilya and Idomante are in love, though she won't admit to loving an enemy of her people. And Electra also loves Idomante. The action begins on this triangular situation. Idomeneo's fleet is sighted, but the rejoicing is silenced by Arbace, Idomeneo's counsellor, who's sung by Robert Tier, bringing news that Idomeneo's ship has been sunk in the storm. Electra is immediately put into a fury because she fears that this will take away all obstacles to Idomante marrying Ilya. They all disperse. Then Idomeneo enters, full of remorse for the rash vow he made to sacrifice the first person he met. Idomante appears, but after many years' absence, they don't at first recognize each other. Eventually, recognition does dawn, with horror on Idomeneo's part, and he parts in anguish from his very puzzled son. The act ends, ironically, with a chorus in honor of the sea god and the returning Cretans.
Escaping in my torment, I would die. 
can these hands be the ministers of death? These are hands are cursed. O oh, cruel God, O oh, hapless victim. The more do I suffer. I owe to you my safety and my life, and what reward will you have at my hand? It is enough to know I have befriended you and afforded you my help and protection. Pitiless towards you. Deep on the bed of ocean sleeps that noble hero, the one I love so dearly, drowned in the tempest, the king in a video. So distressed about his fate. He was my father. Oh, unmerciful gods!
Act two of Mozart's Domineo begins with Idomeneo confiding in Arbace, who suggests that the way for Idomeneo to avoid sacrificing his son, Idamante, is to send Idamante away, escorting Electra back to Greece. Ilya appears, and when Idomeneo promises to make things up to her for all she's suffered, she replies in a beautiful aria that she has found a second home in Crete and a second father in Idomeneo. It dawns on him that she must mean that she loves Idamante, which in turn means that Neptune will now have victims in all three of them if Idamante is separated from his father and his lover. Electra, of course, is delighted at this, and her aria shows that in Mozart's hands, she too is a woman capable of love. The chorus gather for the embarkation and sing one of the most beautiful numbers in the whole opera. Tensions heave below the surface, but the outward scene is an Aegean harbour, the ships riding on a slow, unbroken swell by the teeming quayside. Edamante and Electra take leave of the king in a trio, when suddenly a storm crashes and a monster rears out of the sea. The people guess that they are under a curse and demand to know why. Idomeneo admits his guilt and declares that he is willing to sacrifice himself, but he doesn't say why he is guilty and accuses the god of injustice. The act ends with him standing defiantly before the raging sea. Let me confide in you my secret. When to my undoing the heavens joined with the sea and the ocean depths were shaken, then I was driven to promise a human sacrifice. But who, the first man who on the shore unwittingly approached me, tell me, who did you first encounter? I dare not say it. Idamante. Idamante. What do I hear? He saw you, and did he know you? He saw me, and hastened at once to my assistance. And did you reveal to him his fate? No, stricken with horror, I fled from his sight. And I left him in despair. Unhappy father and wretched Idamante. Good friend, advise me. Save me for pity's sake. Save Idamante. Let him fly the country and see you no more. If he can hide from the people, then with another victim, Neptune may be pacified. Some other god may have him safe in his care. Well spoken, Abba! <laughs> 
pace. Faithful advice of my thanks. He shall go to Argos and accompany Electra to her homeland. My good Arbace, the son owes you his life and the father his Thank you. 
shall explain the meaning of that which so disturbs. Of a prime, what sudden tide of joy and exultation has swept away your sorrow? Then her meaning, full of such tender words for Rita Man. Can she be dreaming? Alas, of the joys to be shared in love's fulfillment. Now I know it, she loves and is beloved. Amante, in freeing her from bondage, betrays your inmost feeling. This was your mistake. For this, the gods are angry. Yes, jealous Neptune, the sun, the father, and Ilya, all three upon your altars will be sacrificed. All three will be our victims. For him the soul, for us a lingering torment.
Act three of Idomeneo begins with a charming aria by Ilia, privately admitting her love for Idamante. When Idamante appears to bid her goodbye before going off to fight the monster, she can't restrain herself any longer from telling him that she does love him. They're interrupted by Idomeneo, who still can't bring himself to admit the real reason for all the trouble, though he does hint darkly at the wrath of Neptune. Electra realizes that her chances are slipping away and bursts out again in fury. Idamante takes his leave by beginning the great quartet, the noblest music in the whole score and the number Mozart himself loved best. Electra's rage, Idomeneo's despair, and the lovers' resignation and tenderness for each other are all combined in an ensemble that far transcends the conventions of the day and the figures of the original libretto. We're now in the street. The people are dying of the plague, those that haven't been eaten by the monster. While within the temple, Idomeneo is forced to confess and to make the demanded sacrifice as the high priest insists. Suddenly, there's a shout of triumph outside. Idomante has slain the monster and now appears having learnt the full truth about Idomeneo's vow. And he offers himself for sacrifice. Idomeneo refuses. 
Ilya nobly tries to offer herself instead. And there's a total impasse, which is resolved by a voice issuing from the oracle declaring that Idomeneo has forfeited his royalty and must expiate his sin by abdicating in favour of his son, who can now ascend the throne with Ilya. Electra rushes furiously away, and the opera ends with Idomeneo presenting the new royal pair to a Crete to which peace has returned.
Outside the gates a crowd has gathered. The mob is angry and demand to speak with you, their sovereign. Prepare yourself, my heart, to bear with your threatens. My son is lost. The priests of Neptune are heading the rebellious procession. Ah, desperate indeed is his fate. Hear me, a magic. A new disaster threat arising of the people. The time has come to meet them. We will go with you. Heaven protect the man. Si 
the shores of your country are all strewn with the dying.
this deed I must do. Fate so has willed it. Barbarous inhuman fate. No, I will not, cannot lift my own hand against my innocent son. I feel a weakness in every fiber of my being. My eyes are clouded. Darkness is upon me. My son. My father. Oh, do not pity.
Royal pair, our greatest gifts, the 